Well, my favourite punk moment in a way is the sort of antithetical punk moment, which is when um, when Liz Hurley wore the Versace safety pin dress on the red carpet. I think in a, it, I think it was ninety three stroke ninety four. Um, anyway, it was the premiere to uh, for weddings and a funeral, which again is so, so unpunk. And I think it, in so many ways, it's everything that would have made. Um, um, you know, the Sex Pistols spin in their grave, but not. And I think Malcolm McLaren would have completely applauded her buccaneering spirit in the way that she used that dress to steal all the publicity that night and actually for months after. And I think she leveraged her way onto a Tatler cover, and I believe a little bit later after the Tatler cover, um, when Estee Lauder was in meetings with the then editor of Tatler, who was Jane Proctor, and they asked what her best-selling cover had been, she said, oh, Liz Hurley. And that was how Liz Hurley then became a spokesperson for Estee Lauder. And sorry, I don't mean to sound like the world's living expert on Liz Hurley's career. <laughs> but this is just stuff that seeped into my into my consciousness over the years. And I think really it was the start of red carpet dressing as we know it now. You know, the way you can wear one dress and, and kind of base a career on it. And as I say, in some ways it's so unpunk and in other ways <laughs> it's it, it it's it's so audacious and so uh anti-establishment in that you know in the old days you had to actually have talent to get far um but i think i think there it, it's all you could argue it's almost a bit punk and it's actually as for the dress itself well it, it was just an incredible dress i mean technically it was such an amazing dress and i loved the idea of Versace doing punk anyway because he was such an unpunk designer i mean italians and punk are an odd combination Versace and punk is is even order because everything about Versace was also glamorous, so polished, so mega celebrity and managed. And when you saw the supermodels coming down the catwalk in all those safety pin dresses, it was just like this incredible clash of two opposing ideas. But I suppose out of that incredible clash, you've got this, this big bang, which you know, still reverberates today. I, I think we saw it again at the Met Ball um, the other month, you know, when you had all these incredibly glossy A, B and C listers sort of doing punk in inverted commas, and there was much sneering this side of the Atlantic about it. But I think it's it's sort of testament to to how good that that the basics of punk were, that they can be reinterpreted so many times. They can be bastardized and, and still actually you recognize it sort of as punk. In a way, it's like Chanel's little black jacket. Plus also, you know, punk had freely borrowed from, there was a little bit of Hell's Angels in there. There was a lot of Betty Page, that 50s sort of, um, I was going to say she was a 50s pinup, but actually she was, she was sort of S&M. Uh, model and and there was so much of of her in punk so punk wasn't original anyway and it y y people get very purist about punk now but it was never a pure mo movement and so in a way i think this dress challenges that whole holier than thou attitude of you know real authentic punks mm. i love that you kind of said it was so unpunk that it almost was punk because this idea as you mentioned of the fact that her whole career is tied to her wearing that dress, it is the ultimate punk statement in a way, which is dressing to grab attention. Dressing to grab attention. And, you know, though at the time there were, the, there were so many commentators saying, well, you know, the Sex Pistols aren't very talented, they can't sing, they can't play their instruments, blah, blah, blah. So I, I think I'm not detracting from punk. It was, it was a fantastic moment, but I don't think we should be too precious about what it really was. Because mm, people are quite scathing of punk being reinterpreted on the catwalk, especially you mentioned some of the Italian designers. You know, we saw yeah, and I totally understand that because, you know, the one thing about punk as it became interpreted 
on the streets was that it cost you nothing. You went to a second-hand shop, you put safety pins through things, you ripped things, you 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 made a dress out of a plastic bag, and people really were doing. I mean, that's my era, and I I remember that. So then, when you get a dress that costs five thousand pounds, it's sort of ludicrous, but. I think that's what's quite amusing, isn't it? I mean, mm. you have to have a sense of humour about these things. And the idea that you might now get the, the first lady of Azerbaijan <laughs> wearing Vunk, which is what Donatella Versace called her latest punk collection, I, I just think that um, it tickles me. I can't help it. It's my sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beautiful irony to it. There is a wonderful circular irony. And also the other thing I I think about punk as done by Westwood and McLaren in the 70s apart from the fact that they borrowed freely from previous eras and sort of movements is that actually the music was never sacrosanct the music was kind of bolted on to the clothes as a way of selling the clothes I mean at the end of the day you know Vivian Westwood is a designer with a shop mm. and and punk I, I, what was I I wrote something uh, recently about uh, it was before the it was before the exhibition opened, and I was saying pretty much that punk had never been this this pure thing. And I think somebody at the end, uh, when it was online, somebody posted a really interesting comment saying was saying that you know we never uh, I was a punk. They were saying they were punks in the seventies, and they never went to Westwood. It was way too expensive. Westwood was where all the Erzats punks went. And I like that because I think, you know, history has this great habit of rewriting itself all the time. And, 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 and uh, you know, you build up this mythology around something. But actually, when I, when I was growing up in Dorset, which doesn't sound very subversive place, but you'd be surprised. I mean, there were lots of punks down there. And, you know, I didn't know anybody who went to Westwood. Nobody could afford it. It was all DIY. So... This idea that true punk should be ring fenced and only have a Westwood label in it is 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 not quite the truth either. Mm. Do you think fashion is too precious about punk being this attitude thing? Because I thought it was really interesting when you mentioned you know the safety pin because it's almost like the codes of punk. And do you think that that people should embrace that as its legacy? You know. Safety? No, I think I think it's good to I think it's good to. Um, to, I'm glad that, that the era has now been sort of, um, you know, burnished as this great moment of anarchy because actually, arguably, there is there isn't. Well, I have to be careful what I say. I mean, I'm not I'm not this is I'm not an anarchist, but you know, there there was there was that cr- tremendous freedom in those days, and there was a huge freedom from brands. I mean, it, growing up in the 70s. There was no allegiance to brands because there just weren't any. I mean, the brands that existed, like Dior, were just for old people. Um, and now, you know, every it seems every teenager aspires to be decked out in labels. So I think that is a really good thing to aspire to. And I think, um, I think it's it would be it, it's really nice to have a little bit of uh, of an anarchic anti-establishment streak running through you. And of course. The, the Met Ball is the absolute antithesis of that. It's stage managed from start to finish, mm. and you know a lot of it is about doing court, doing you know business, corporate business. The tables are three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars each. So, you know, I can understand why people um, people were sniffy about it. But I think rather than being too too sort of scathing. I think it's just put it into the context of of what it was. I think punk's a great legacy, and I don't. I just just because I I'm saying that it's more complicated and more more nuanced than than we like to think of it. Then it's commonly held. It doesn't mean that that there were no values there worth hanging on to. And I guess what it goes back to the Liz Hurley dress because those values are perfectly sort of captured by that because as much as you you know it's the four weddings and a funeral premiere you can equate that to the met ball that it's the least punkish it was the event. least punkish yes ex- exactly and also she was so blatant about what she was doing i just i it, it kind of took your breath away and it was it was the, also because i suppose back then in 94 this was pre the whole sort of um the the sort of 
the dictatorship and the power of the Hollywood stylist. I think I think what happened was she just went into the press office in London and that was hanging on the rail and she kind of grabbed it. So there was a kind of pure um, opportunistic naivety about it that's quite appealing today. Mm. No, it seems quite refreshing now when you look at no one would wear that on the red carpet today without being very pre-planned and very polished this is quite DIY. also i think i think what, what now we know we know the cause and effect of everything you know if you if you wear something that plunges to your navel you know your that you know the next step will be a cover of nuts or whatever but 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 it wasn't so it wasn't quite so mapped out then mm. so it was it was more fun and it was more shocking you know, it, there was a there was a degree of of oh my god, what's she wearing? That's a bit that's a bit much for her. I mean, Liz Hurley up to that point wasn't Liz Hurley. I mean, she'd been in some BBC series about uh, an English woman who found herself in Nazi Germany, so she was actually quite respectable. <laughs> you know, she wasn't Liz Hurley, the kind of um, best friend with Elton John and you know, red carpeteer that she is now. So it was, you did think, wow, she shouldn't really be wearing that dress. That's not a dress for a serious actress. Um, And indeed, (laughs) that proved to be the case, but who needed to be a serious actress?